Hey guys, today we're going to go through different problems for simple and compound interest, which actually has a lot of real world examples and applications. For example, if you put your money into a savings account at the bank, they will pay you what's called an interest for keeping your money with them. They're basically saying, thanks for choosing us and letting us handle your money. Here's a little bit of extra cash for banking with us. This money that you get from interest, you get to keep, which is basically free money. But on the other hand, if you borrow money from the bank, for example, if you took out a loan when buying a car, they will charge you an interest, or in other words, a fee for borrowing their money. This is money that you have to pay on top of what you originally borrowed. All right, let's look at some word problems. How much interest do you earn after one year if you put $1,000 in the bank with an interest rate of 6%? There is actually a formula you can use to calculate interest. It's I equals PRT, where I is the amount of interest or money that you'll earn. P is the principal, which is the amount of money that you first put in. R is the interest rate, and T is the amount of time your money is in that account, in years. So for a problem, we are trying to find I, which is the interest we'll earn. P is the principal, or in other words, the amount of money we first put in, which is $1,000. R is the interest rate, which is 6%. Now, this is super important. Make sure you always convert the percent to a decimal first. Just move the decimal to the left two spots. So 6% as a decimal is 0 0.06. And T is the time the money is in the account, which is one year. Multiplying it all together, we'll get 60. This means that if we put $1,000 into an account at this bank and wait for one year, we'll get an interest of $60, which is our final answer. Unfortunately, all these math problems you usually see are lying to you because in the real world, the interest rate is a lot lower. The very highest interest rates you can usually find is around 0.5%. So if we were to calculate our interest earned using the more realistic rate of 0.5%, we'll actually get that our interest is only $5 for the entire year. So it's not that easy getting free money. Fortunately, and also unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, this same formula works when you borrow money too. Let's say you really wanna buy a car for $5,000, but you don't have the money right now, so you take out a loan. By taking out a loan, you are borrowing money from the bank. So the bank says, okay, you can borrow my money, but you have to pay me a 4% interest rate and take your time, pay me back over the span of three years. 4% doesn't sound like that much and you have some time to pay it back, but let's actually calculate how much extra you have to pay in interest over these three years. We're going to use the same equation, I equals PRT. We're still trying to find I, which is the interest we're going to be paying. P is the principal, which is the amount of money we're borrowing, which is 5,000. R is the rate at 0 0.04. And T is time, which is three years. When we multiply it all out, our interest is $600, which is our final answer to this problem. And this means that you are paying $600 more to be able to borrow the money. So over the span of three years, you'll be paying a total of $5,600 instead of just $5,000 if you didn't have to take out the loan. Now, what we just learned is called simple interest. There's also something called compound interest, where you're earning interest on top of your interest. So for example, if we go back to the scenario where we put $1,000 in the bank with 6% interest, let's say the bank uses compound interest and it compounds every month. 
That means if we put the money in in January, by the end of the month, we're going to have $1,005. So this is how it was with simple interest also. In the next month, we're still getting 6% interest, but now it's 6% interest on $1,005, not just the $1,000 anymore. So by the end of February, we'll have $1,010 and 2.5 cents in the account. This additional 2.5 cents is because of the compounding. If we keep compounding every month, by the end of the year in December, we're going to have $1,061.68 instead of just the $1,060 we got from simple interest. This amount seems small, but when we're talking about much bigger numbers like 10,000, 100,000, or even $1 million, it definitely adds up. If we were to put what we just calculated into a normal problem you might see in class, it would look something like, how much money would there be in a savings account after one year if $1,000 is deposited at a 6% interest rate compounded monthly? For compound interest, we have a new formula now, where A is the future amount, or the total amount of money we're going to have in the account, P is still the principal, which is the amount of money we're first putting in. R is still the interest rate in decimal form. But now we have a variable called N, where N is the number of times it's compounded per year. And T is still time in years. And plugging in all the numbers, we're solving for A. P equals 1,000. R equals 0 0.06. N equals 12, because it's compounded monthly and there are 12 months in a year. And T is the time the money is in the account, which is one year. We'll get our answer, $1,061.68. That means we'll have $1,061.68 in our bank account after one year, which is great, more money. Now, compound interest gets pretty scary when you think about loans and when you're borrowing money because you'll end up owing more. Credit card companies, for example, use compound interest, which means that you're paying interest on top of your interest when you don't pay them back. Credit card companies are also notorious for having super high interest rates too. So let's say you charged $2,000 to your credit card, which is basically temporarily borrowing $2,000 from them. Your credit card has a 15% interest rate that compounds daily, which I could say is fairly standard in the real world. How much money would you owe in six months if you don't make any payments towards it? We can use our compound interest equation to get the answer. We're trying to solve for A, which is our future amount. P equals 2,000 because that's the initial amount we charge to the credit card. R equals 0.15. N equals 365 because N is the number of times it compounds each year. So if it compounds daily, then it compounds 365 times per year. And T equals 0.5 years because six months is one half of a year. When we calculate it all together, we'll get that A equals $2,155.74. This means that if you don't pay down your $2,000 credit card bill, after six months, you'll need to pay $2,155.74, and it will keep growing until you pay it. This is how people get into credit card debt because interest keeps compounding on itself, and you start owing interest on the interest, and it gets harder and harder to pay back. So the lesson in today's video is really to never charge anything you can't pay to your credit card.
Those are all of the problems I wanted to work through in this video. Please give it a thumbs up if this helped you learn something today and subscribe for more math videos. I'll see you in the next one.